easy to use, reasonably good tracking for visual and maybe some uh, of the planetary uh, or lunar work amongst us. Um, not ideally suited for deep, deep, deep sky uh, imaging, but the, the actual mount has provided quite a reliable uh, and easy to operate uh, mount for the, the basic user. All right. Um, I've had it for about two years. However, I have noticed a few uh, problems now that have disappeared. And I just want to illustrate to you guys to highlight these problems. Um, again, as I mentioned before, not from the previous guides, is that the amounts will always have TV problems, right? Regardless of um, when you use it in winter and use it in winter, uh, summer, your mount tends to operate very differently. So you have to periodically, in the winter, adjust it, and in the summer months, adjust it. Particularly on the uh, on the gears itself, because in the winter they start to relax, and summer the gears start tiring up. So you have to make sure you, you adjust it in a certain way so that the mount will operate optimum to its peak performance as you expect it to be. Now, this mount is quite a very basic mount. All right, it's two electric servo motors, and it works quite well. Alright, it's guided by the handset. Alright, it's a very simple device. However, I'm going to illustrate you guys, I'm going to show you a close up on the problems I'm now facing. Don't let this put you off, guys. Alright, guys and girls. Don't let this put you off. This, this is the norm, right? It's about how old you have this telescope and the mount. You're going to get TV problems and there are certain ways you're going to have to strip it out and, and have a closer look what's wrong. Alright? Because you'll probably find that if you haven't and something goes wrong um, on the mount and it's not tracking as it should be, um, bear in mind that if you bought a brand new mount and you get TV problems anyway, don't strip it down, take it straight back to the retailer where you bought it, all right, and say, look, I've got problems with this mount because it's still under warranty. You don't want to be stripping this if it's if the warranty is still in warranty. Ideally, I've had this two years, so my warranty has run out. So I can afford to just take this apart and see what's wrong. All right. So what I'm going to do now, we're going to have a closer look on my finding what has gone wrong. Okay. Right. I'm going to show you about the the problems now. Of this mount. First off, first is I'm going to operate the keypad and I'm going to uh, move the up and down arrows right to increase the, the altitude up and down and see what happens. As you can see, it, it, it's slowing, it's, it's slowing uh, reasonably well. Now, see what's just happened now. It starts to slow down to its maximum. I'll go again. Now, bear in mind, these are brand new batteries. I've just replaced them. All right. Um, it doesn't appear on on the bit going down, but it seems to be as I go up to a certain point, it starts to. Um, slow down and as if it was struggling see it there now just start the motors just start to struggle so that's one of the other TV problems I've noticed now what I've noticed there is that when I'm trying to image with planets and all that if I go on like slower speeds you know and I set the slowing speed rate to uh, so I select the rate to like 4 I notice it doesn't tend to uh, like certain speeds and it's not as smooth um, 
again, it noticed this, it, it slew uh, to that point there, and it was starting to struggle at this point here. But also, when I've set different speeds, uh, the movement isn't as smooth as well. Um, I'm going to try uh, an angle. I'll try the left and right. You see, you can see how the motors sort of hit and miss. It's working, not as struggling as much as uh, as the altitude one. But it's sort of, sort of as if the mo motor's intermittent on that side. All right, but it's not as bad as the the altitude one. Right. Also, I notice is this. This this clamp is very tight. But just what happens is if I hold this telescope here on the tube, right, and I'm going to shake it about. You see that? Can you see that? There's a lot of free play. I think it's more prominent on that side. See the amount of free play on there? That's also the other third concern. Alright, this is not moving the mount. This is just moving the actual uh, mount itself. And there seems to be a lot of free play there. So, this is the reason why um, I'm doing this guide. Um, basically, I'm going to have a close look on the, my findings and any of the hints and tips please take on board what you're going to uh, obviously don't be don't be worried about it don't be shocked if your mount's exactly the same all right I've had this for two years and it served the purpose and it's worked quite well it still works to this day but I have noticed that the tracking hasn't been as great so what I'm going to do is, is that um, I'm going to strip the mount apart, all right, and I'm going to show you all the bits that's inside and see what my findings are. The tools you're going to need are you're going to need a cross point screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, a 30 millimeter socket with an extension piece, and and then use a ratchet or a spanner. You're going to need uh, some cleaning stuff, uh, which is, I use a Loctite cleaner, which is like a brake fluid, uh, like a brake uh, cleaner. All right, I'm going to use some of that. And some rags, so I can clean up stuff. Use a used toothbrush. All right, ideally use one that's it's, it's a bit knackered. All right. And finally, get yourself uh, some white lithium grease, all right, which you can usually get from a lot of good bicycle shop, shops. Alright, first off what you're going to do is disconnect the power and disconnect your, your handset, okay? So you just get all of them, so you don't want to have no power connected. All right. Then remove the telescope, holding the tube, releasing the dovetail. Okay, and put that nice and safe. Unscrew the bottom base. Holding this by filming it and lift it out. This will now, uh, this is basically we're going to be working with now, from now on, working the actual mount itself. Okay? You can now put the, the tripod leg away, you don't need, you don't need the tripod legs. Put the mount itself, and I've noticed. Uh, here, you see the pre play here. It's only slight, 
but there is a lot of sloppiness there. Um, luckily, when you strip the whole unit, it's all kind of sealed. All right, it's all sealed together. All right. First off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the bolt anyway, so it's out of the way, so I don't bend the bolt. So I'm going to take that off. Right, I've rubbed the ball here. Uh, that actual mount is, is held in with this 13mm uh, nut. I'm guessing that's where all the slot is coming from, from there. But I'm not just going to just purely just um, focus on that. I'm going to strip down the whole, whole unit and see what we find. First off, I'm going to use a Phillips screwdriver. I'm going to disconnect uh, the Phillips screwdrivers here and here, like so. So I'm going to hit it there, hit, loosen that, and hit, that'll come out. Okay, we've now got access to the cover plate. Alright, and you can see where you've got a power lead here. Alright, there's your power box for your motor. And you know, there's the power port. Now, yeah, there's the lead for the motor for the altitude, and here's the motor for your left and right or altosimum, if you will want to call it. Okay, I'm not going to purely focus on anything around here. Alright. Um, what I'm a big believer is, um, if you're operating anything with electrical parts, make sure you remove anything metal, so you're not wearing any metal items. Um, so you don't want any static to get on the circuit board. First off, you're going to do is uh, I'm going to disconnect this lead here. Right, and the lead should just pull out, like so. Alright, that will just get rid of this piece out of the way, so you're not going to damage any parts and all that. So you put that to one side safely. Okay, as you see here, it's really quite, there's not much to it, in a way. Um, you've got this knot here, which is held in with a single shaft. So I'm guessing that on this other side here you can get access to the drive. So get the 13mm socket and ratchet. On this side, um, if if it moves, hold hold the actual ends and crack it off. Right? You'll then release this part here, the nut here. The nut's held in, it's now a nut, look, nut. And you've got a, a spring washer and your normal washer. Okay. Now it seems like it's held in with um, this end as well. Um, Obviously, this seems like a different size, so we're going to get another socket. This is a terminal socket, disconnect that, and we're going to loosen uh, the other here. Okay, this will all slide down in a wire, and there you go. Together. As you can see, there's that's one thing I've just noticed straight away is I don't like this at all. Now, okay, the grease is fine, but after a few years, this grease will start to harden, and as you can see, it's very tacky, it's really quite old. And there seems to be very lack of grease on the gears as well on this side. 
So first impression straight away that tells me that that grease is quite old and it looks like it's not doing the job it's supposed to be doing. Alright, so straight away after seeing all of that, straight away after seeing all of that, it's not performing as it should. Um, also, there seems to be like some kind of Teflon pads on either side. But again, you can see there's there's a lot. There's, it seems to be here. There seems to be a lot of uh, rust, and it looks like uh, in fact there's dirt as well. Dirt, is dirt as well as rust. So, first impression straight away, I just do not like that grease at all. Um, so this is the reason why, uh, this has just hit me straight away why there was a very lack of uh, movement within the, within the gearing system. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean that up. Alright? What we're going to do is, uh, now you can use uh, alcohol, um, you can use alcohol to clean it, a cleaning solution. But uh, I tend to uh, prefer to use my good old uh, brake cleaner, alright, lock tight or whatever. Basically what we're going to do, we're going to remove these Teflon pads, alright, we're going to remove those Teflon pads, we'll take them apart, and we'll give them a clean with a rag, alright, and we'll put them to one side. Alright, I'm going to take that one apart, and then put that one to one side. Okay, clean them off. First off we're going to do, we're going to spray some of this, um, this stuff, but before I do that I'll make sure that all my electrical parts are away from uh, the spray. Okay, I'm going to give this uh, a, a nice coating. Now it seems to be that the, the, the spindle is quite fixed in its own uh, recess. So, it's quite a solid lump. Okay, let that soak in and melt, and then we're just going to we're just going to clean off that horrible grease. As you can see, here, it's all coming off apart. All right, yeah. see all the crap and the guns coming off that. All right, yeah, there seems to be some rusty patches here. Straight away, first impressions that obviously moisture's got inside there. So it's not to worry, we can repair that. Alright, so we can repair all that rust. We're just going to clean off the surface. Alright, get rid of all that gunky grease. To have any damage. Alright, there seems to be a few in indentations there. Alright, so we can, uh, we can sort that out. I need to get rid of this surface rust here. Alright, on this spindle. Alright, that side is nice and clean. However, I want to try and get rid of the old grease between these gaps here. Alright, so we spray some of the good old brake disc cleaner. Spray it all the way around. And then we're going to use a toothbrush. And you're basically going to brush off all the crap. Alright. I'm going to brush all the crap off between the teeth. All right, so you just go around, all the way around. All right, if it gets clogged up, all right, the brush, put that bit down, just clean it off. All right, and then do it again. All right, just keep brushing all that horrible crap. surfaces right, and just try rub down as much as you can 
to remove uh, this surface rust, including the, the side of um, even the side of the where the meated part is. Just give it a good quick polish. Uh, pay particular areas between this part here. Right, as you can see here, there's a little bit of surface rust, surface rust there, and you just keep rubbing it across here. Right, try and get rid of most of the, the, the rust off as you can. If you can't get it off, you can't get it off. Just get as much as you can, right, and then try and clean it up. Right, um, at the moment, this is probably the maximum I'm going to get out of this. So, it also, from the look of this, this has caused either lubrication not being onto this, this part of the, the gear. So, it's managed to get rusted that way. But once you're happy with it, Alright, get a, a duster and just lightly just buff it across alright, to a nice deep shine. Alright, you find that all the debris and all that has got dislodged again here. So, you still, again, you've got to clean up uh, the gear again. I'm using the, uh, the cleaner and just spray along along the gear, okay, just get rid of bits of the debris, alright, so get rid of some of the debris you can, a lot less crap you can get off that debris the better, okay, and then, as you see now, all the gear is cleaned, alright, clean it off with a, a rag or tissue or whatever you've got available, that gear is looking a lot more healthier, alright, it's looking a lot better. And basically just leave that to dry, alright, leave that to dry. Right, we're going to have a look at the motors. The motors don't look seem too bad actually. But what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect using a flip screwdriver, alright, take off the two screws here. And here, at the moment, they're all, they're all sort of clean. So you take off the screws, like so, and then you should have your motor just extract from here. Once the motor is uh, taken apart. At this piece here, disconnect this lead here. This should just pull out. Put this to one side. You can now see that even the motor, there's a lot of gunge and fragments of where those uh, burrs used to be. So that also needs cleaning as well. So again, do the same process using a decrease degreaser, like so. Spray that. Clean it with rag, like that. To clean up like so. If you can't get it all off, try some more. Soak it through. Carefully not to spray it on the motor itself. Then use a toothbrush, clean up the gear. Keep going along the side here. Keep doing that and then do the same process. Clean it with a bit of rag. And there's your clean gear. However, um, I actually have stripped this down, this this uh, motor unit. But however, I would not recommend that you do that, right? Because what's inside here is loads of complex uh, spur gears, uh, gear train, and this gear train is very uh, packed inside. And I have stripped it out and. Luckily for me, being a vehicle mechanic by trade, I put it all back together. 
But however, inside here, if you loosen these screws here, these Phillips screws, you can get access to uh, the gear train. But I had a look, and believe it or not, because it's all sort of sealed together, it's got fresh grease anyway. So I would seriously not recommend stripping this item out because if you do do that um, all the spur gears will stop will fall out so luckily I worked it out and managed to get all back together but just the pointer is that if you've got limited mechanical experience do not go any further just clean up the gear and that's enough uh, so don't go into, into stripping this all right um, because it will play an absolute nightmare Luckily inside because it's sealed the grease is in good quality and it's like a, a white sort of lifting grease anyway um, So also we're going to proceed here even more Refit this gear back on all right, so well, Before we do that before we refit it We've got to uh, re-grease the, uh, the little spur gear what you probably find where it was situated, this gear, is to give it a bit of a rag and clean off the recess amount of grease in here, alright, so it cleans all that off. Then, get your PTFE grease. Get a bit of a screwdriver and just dab along uh, the gear itself, alright? So coat it with gear, it's a good coating of grease. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna position the motor in there in its housing like so. You see where I've lined it up okay and it slots in just like that then you're going to put your two screws at either side two fillet screws one here and then the other screw at the back of that one fillet screwdriver and Carefully just tighten it all the way up. Okay, just make sure it's all done up. Right, so then from here, just just check see if it's all secure. Then you put your connection back into this port here. You can't go wrong, it goes one way only. Then we're going to put that down there. Uh, we've a clean, refurbished uh, BN spigot. Again, you're going to just butter that all the way across okay now you see for yourself now the whole gear now is now uh, coated yeah there's quite a lot of grease on there but um, just totally take particular areas around that ridge here all right it's all fully greased up all right it's a bit messy I'll right, we'll put that gear back on there now, as I mentioned before, right on the back of the mount, you can see where the Teflon pads used to be. All right, there's the Teflon pads. Uh, at the moment, I need to. You can see where the recess where the Teflon pads is. What we need to do is just basically just re-clean all this off. All right, you don't really need a cleaner for this because it's plastic. You just you can just hand warp it on all that but if you're very particular you can see where this old grease is coming off if you still um, want to make it totally clean all right, then you can just use a bit of the old 
cleaner and just basically just further clean that a bit more right, so you can clean all that crap and gunge and all that once you're happy with it the other two Teflon pads you can uh, you can basically replace them all right back into their original positions all right all right and that's basically what it looks like all right you then assemble your gear this is the gear and it will go back into the position here so it slots in place okay and then really just go into there now it doesn't matter if it's on the wrong way around but you want to uh, it takes some time to put this together okay and it slots in like that, do you see that? see how that's slotted in there Right, that's basically now the, the, the spur gear is on, uh, is basically mounted onto there now. Right, you then put your washers back in there, like so. And then you put your, your other washer, uh, put your small 10mm bolt and your spring washer in there. Now, top tip, you could either lock tight this, alright, on an iron knot, but it's really up to you. Um, luckily, I just renewed the, the iron knot anyway and got another one. Alright, I did it that way. Alright, and you're basically just using your ratchet on your terminal socket and just tighten it up. Tighten it up tight, but not enough, not too much to so strip the threads. Already, there's hardly any free play on now. That's quite tight. Now. So there's no this free play. So it's looking quite tight. Okay, this part now, all right, is is done. So now we're going to proceed on the other motor. Now, one thing I did notice on this motor is this can be a bit of a nightmare to get this screw out and the screw at the back all right luckily because it's a sealed unit i found that it might be an e it's easy to just take this part here so what we're going to do is now we're going to take this part off we're going to take this part off using the foot screwdriver this will take this this bracket off Now this looks like a, uh, it's either a 13 or 12 uh, or um, a 10. We'll just measure the 13. Yes, it's a 13 mil. So we disconnect that and uh, we loosen the 13 mil nut at the back. This will come out. There'll be a washer and something in there in place. This will pop out, quite a tight fit. Right, again, same sort of setup. We've got the Teflon pads and all that. Okay, this side doesn't look um, too bad. However, there seems to be still a very lack of grease around this uh, part. So what we're going to do is, because this uh, motor won't come out, uh, we're going to have to clean it in residue already mounted as so, alright, using the cleaner. I'm going to use the spray here, alright, and we're just going to clean as best as we can. Because this motors you can't get from the back end, Alright, um, this is a bit of a shame, but basically we're really just going to clean the gear as best you can, alright, using the toothbrush, I'm just going to brush all the, 
brush all the the dirt and all that from you. Okay. Just keep brushing there. Using the rag, clean it up. This one doesn't seem to have that much damage on here, so I think we've done alright on that. So we just keep cleaning that. Alright. There don't seem to be that much damage at all on this one at all. So which is good news. Get some grease and just butter that up. Alright, particular areas on the on the spur gear and the little gear. Alright, and just keep buttering it up. Okay, swipe off some of the excess. Like so. Okay, that's that grease. Okay, there's done. Basically, this is the bottom piece, and it looks like there was a smear of grease all the way around here. So, what we're going to do is we're going to clean this base up using the good old uh, brake cleaner. Spray it all on there, you don't need too much. Using the rag, clean rag, just, just clean that down. All right, clean while we're around that race. Now, as you notice, um, just take particular areas where there's any wear marks. If there is any wear marks, use again, use a Brillo pad or very, very fine uh, emery cloth to just, just also get rid of the burrs and stuff like that. All right. So very important that you uh, do that. Then, then what you do now, after that, get a smidgen of grease and just lay the race up like so. And keep doing it to you cover the entire race. That's the race uh, done. Now one thing that I need to highlight when you before you put the the base back on, I noticed that um, there is a, a flange part, a flat bit there, which indicates that this spindle here has a flat edge and does not require to be greased. So there's no uh, reason to grease this point here. All right, absolutely no reason. All right. So, there's no reason to grease this point here, because basically it's fixed on there, and that's all it is, just fix it onto the base. I'm going to put the base in there, okay, like so, and then line up, making sure your Teflon pads, now if your Teflon pads pop out, just put them back on again, like so. You go one way and then do it again. This you've got to line up once it's in there. You should be able to push that in. Put your washer, your spring washer, put in a nut like so. Get in your 30mm uh, socket on there and then just tighten it up. and welcome to another great edition of Astronomy for Beginners. I haven't done a, a guide for some time now. Um, uh, basically I've been away on a business trip into Kenya. Now I'm back. I've unfortunately had to move house so I've moved to a different location and, and basically I've been really busy. So, so obviously I'm going to go back onto part three which was maintenance procedures and repair 
on the uh, Skywatch AZ go to mount. Now, as I, um, as you can remember, on part two, that we progressed on putting it all together and we're about to put it on the base. Um, however, I did a slight mistake. Basically, what I did was I connected it wrong. Basically, I connected one of the uh, AZ motors onto the handset port, and what happened was, as I was using it, it it basically burnt out this uh, and stopped moving. It didn't work at all. So basically, what I did was strip it all out and had a closer look. And what I did was because it was I connected it wrong by rushing it. As, as I can't stress it enough, do not rush these things. It happens, right? Do not rush it. Um, I looked in there and I could see where I burnt it out. I, I, I could see it was all burnt out, one of the chips was burnt, and basically I ruined my motherboard on the chip. Um, obviously, I've been away. I ordered the part from OVL, which is um, Optics, Optical Vision and uh, Limited. That is the company name. And I ordered one, a brand new one from them, um, cost me around about uh, 39 pounds, including posting. So basically, they sent it over. After I come back from Kenya, it arrived. Uh, was an absolute saviour. Now. Obviously, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back as replacing the chip, and I'm going to show you how to connect all the wires together, making sure you don't do exactly the same as what I've done. All right. But again, as I mentioned before, don't rush these jobs. All right. Don't rush in. You have plenty of time. All right. And just take your time. Everyone will be able to achieve it. Now obviously I put the new one back in and it worked. However, I'm going to show you the process how how to where uh, install it itself. All right. So we're going to go to the mount and I'm going to show, give you a closer look. This is the the chip that blew up. All right, and you can see here this part here is what happened. Basically, this chip decided to melt and basically stop everything from moving. Uh, this is what I need to tell you. This bit where it says out is the altitude uh, motor. This part here, nearest to a little port here, I don't know if you can see that, it says A to Z. Okay, A to Z. So basically, that's for the Al um uh, motor. So that's your altitude motor and that's your, uh, that's your Al Tazimov motor. This part here. Is your handset this port here? It usually says uh, RJ45 here. All right, RJ45. All right. So basically, that's for the handset. Alt for the motor and AZ for the altos of uh, motor. These two are nearest uh, to each other. However, do not put plug the the handset in any of these. All right, and that's what happened to my uh, old uh, circuit board. So basically, it's a hard lesson learned, but obviously, what I did was was rush it. We're going to go over to the uh, uh, onto the Altas mount. You basically disconnect uh, these screws here, and it should pop out. Here, as you could see, the actual. Um, you should see the actual uh, layout, okay?
Alright, you must remember them. It goes one way and one way only. So basically, when you're connecting, always, always connect the right ones. Alright? Um, if you do have, uh, if you do have something that's gone wrong, all right, you can get this chip replaced easily, right? And basically, to take that chip off, you take off the screws here on either side, all right? So you take either screws either side, and the whole chip pops out in a one all right? If you got the uh, a blown circuit board, so if this if this uh, circuit chip blows, you can just take those two Phillips screws and take them out. All right, we're now going to connect the motors again to show you. Basically, remember altitude motor here connects to this port here. Okay, it clips in. Doesn't matter uh, the the ports fit one way, so you can't get mistaken. Alright, and then you've got your Altaz motor, Altazimov motor here. Okay, and clips to that side here. Alright, that is now set, and all it leaves now is you to connect the handset. Alright, and that is just simple. Okay, there's a handset port, and you connect that again, like so. Well, it only fits a certain way. Right, and you basically connect the lid like so. You then replace the screws, right, and you tighten them up like so. And then you connect the handset cable back to the uh, SynScan handset like so. Alright. That is now. Yeah, I'll toss them off, ready to go. Okay, telescope mounted. Now we're going to connect the power onto the port, like so. Okay, switch on the uh, power tank and then check see if everything's running fine. Okay. Okay, handset seems to be working. Now from the handset, we're going to go through uh, its motions, see if the handset's working properly. It, all the menus seems to be there. Alright, we're going to go through, yes, time, date, state, savings, and we'll go for alignment just to make sure uh, everything's running fine. So we do like a northern sky. All right, it's going to pick up Capella. So basically, I've got to slew the scope to see it's going to find Capella. Man, look at that. It's moving so smooth. No, no restraint. Say we've just found Capella. So we sent it to Capella. All right, and it's going to pick out another star. And look at it. It's it's moving like a dream. And for a look of it, it's the alignment seems to be um, sorted itself out. Obviously, this is a fake alignment. We're only doing a pretend alignment, but it just—I've just gone through the test to make sure that everything's running okay. Now, the only way to prove that it is working fine is to get it, get the telescope outside and start using it, and just double check see if the drives are working fine and all that. But from the look of this, there is a massive noticeable gain. On the performance already, all right. It seems to be working with its slewing everything, 
and uh, yeah it's a massive difference also to point out as you can see it's so smooth there's no seem to be no backlash at all straight away no backlash and also as I mentioned on part one I've sorted out this uh, gear slop obviously there was a problem with the, the free play like so alright and you can see there's no free play at all now the only thing that's it's probably twisting is the, is the tripod but there's no free play now it seems a lot more steadier now on this uh, what I've done to this mount all right, I've made it, uh, the, the gears tight so that you can't move this uh, tube by hand now on the original one uh, you could be able to turn um, the telescope tube by hand but to be honest with you I don't really like that I, I rather uh, have the clutches really tight so that I've got basically permanent drive so I can control it through my handset alright so I can control it through my handset and I've got no gear slop and all that um, it's your personal preference you can get those t gears quite tight but to be honest with you, for me, I personally like them permanently on drive and controlled by the, the control itself and use the handset to move the, uh, the scope tube about then pushing this by hand. All right? But if you say it's a bit too tight for you, all you have to do is do the same process, strip it apart and where these nuts are here and here, just readjust the, uh, the nuts slightly to your taste. Right, but basically for me, I rather prefer to have them quite tight so you've got no gear slot. Now, obviously, it's, it's a massive improvement. All right, from the when it was obviously when it was first uh, looked into. Um, feel free, guys, to do this uh, uh, project yourself, but bear in mind, don't rush it. All right, don't not rush into the process. And then start burning out the motherboard because it can easily be done. All right, so I hope this guys helps you guys. I uh, hope you go out there and prove your AZ go to mounts. All right, there's not many guys out there that actually demonstrates on improvement on this mount. But obviously, from looking um, now, it seems to perform quite really well, and I mean astoundingly well compared to where it originally was. Now obviously for myself, I could risk this to in two, uh, I've had this mount for two years and obviously the, the, the warranty has run out, so I can afford to do this. But if your mount is in warranty, you know, and you just bought it and you've got faults already, then to be honest with you, I would not sacrifice um, on ruining your warranty. Because if something goes wrong and it's under warranty, you're not going to get your money back or get it repaired. So it's very crucial, don't take this if you've got a brand new mount. But for the guys who've had this mount for some while, go ahead, try it. You know, it makes a, a massive I a difference. Thanks again, uh, thanks for watching, and thank you for all your support, for you guys who supported uh, Strummy for Beginners. All right, we'll be doing more guys ahead. Please feel free to ask us any questions. All right, and there's more and more guys out there are willing to help you out as well uh, with their fountain of knowledge and experience so obviously we'll look forward to seeing you all again all right i'm, I'm back for a while and uh, we are producing obviously we'll be producing more guys later on so enjoy this one and thanks again and thanks for watching